Welcome to Egg Food What? First and only podcast about people eating stuff. I'm Mike Lisk. Hello, everybody. Welcome again to another episode of Egg Food. Young Michael, how are we this week? Doing good. Doing good. Um, Just good? Yeah, just good. What's on, buddy? Talk to your Uncle Greggy. What's okay. going on, buddy? Well, well, yeah, it's funny you mentioned that. Uh, the other Thank day, you. went out to the mailbox. I saw a uh, package. Did you? Priority mail package. P- high priority. Like this was important to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. And so I'm, I start smiling. I'm like, okay, good old Greg. You know, he knows yeah. He knows that grief is a process, that uh, it, it takes time for people. And uh, you can always sympathize with that person when they're think so. grieving. Think yeah. So. So uh, I grab the package. Hmm. I rip it open immediately. You were that excited? I was that excited. I'm like, Greg, coming through. I pull out two autographed copies of your books. Williamsburg Rats and The Wedding Party. Parties. Parties. <laughs> 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 no i didn't so so far mike this has been very touching i'm like another cheap ploy to plug his books <laughs> yet another cheap ploy whatever it takes brother to plug those books yeah once once i'm a billionaire everyone will love to tell the story about me driving around in my old sedan selling copies out of out of the out of the car trunk then, then you'll love that story. I see you're an international author now. I, I saw somebody from Sweden on Instagram. Tim. Gave you a big plug. Thank you, Tim. No, I, mean, I was hoping all... to try to be cooler about it and act like that happens all the time, but okay, we can we can do it your way. Now, this is all a fantasy. Mm. It was not a package from Greg. No. It was a package from a fan. Best show fan, egg food, what fan? Mm. Carolyn Petty. Also, uh, you can find her at at Carolyn the DJ on Twitter. She's a DJ. Check out her radio show. She's a fan of the show. She heard us talking about jelly beans. Boom, boom, boom. She sends me some jelly beans. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Yeah. Something Greg could have easily done. Let me write, hold right. on. <laughs> Jelly beans. It would have been cheap, too. It would have been cheap. Um, well, maybe I don't want to go cheap. <laughs> you think Here they oh, are. Man, let's show the jelly bean. Belly That's flops. Two bags. Belly flops. Irregular jelly beans. Oh, so, so these are these are they can't sell at full price. <laughs> these are special and, jelly beans. Yeah, okay. What's this? Uh, no Mutant thing. jelly beans. Can you see Carolyn? this? Carolyn Ketty. So these are jelly beans the factory was getting rid of because they fucked up. And uh, <laughs> close friend of yours, Carolyn, uh, was so feeling so so much compassion for you and your recent loss. She said, let me package up this garbage that uh, they can't give away and <laughs> ship it off to Mike. Now they're delicious. They're oh, delicious, okay. and they're special. Yeah, they're and, post-Easter uh, irregular candy. Always there, popular. There's, there's spicy jelly beans in there. Uh-huh. It's non-spicy. Uh, they're delicious. I've already gone through half a bag. And, so even uh, if we agree that it's a thoughtless, cheap, next-to-nothing gift, no. I from still the have heart. to face the fact that it's more no. than no, what it's I It's from the heart. I won't have you debase it. Something that was came from the heart and uh, gave me joy. I will not let you do it. I will debase it. A, a base or debase? <laughs> no. Well, I want to thank Carolyn for that. Yeah, She's thanks, Carolyn. Kid. You're up. that's that's great. <laughs> and uh, another great person out there, not named Greg Wilson. Awesome. <laughs> They're starting to add up. Mm-hmm. Well, right now we're at one. Uh huh. All right. Well. Should we just Jay. get right? To, 
should we just get right to it? I, I think maybe why don't you start sending me a note like Sunday and say, hey buddy, have you sent me anything yet? <laughs> so I, mean, I don't forget. Why, how, why don't, how many hints do what, I have to what, tell you what? Why don't you buy something? <laughs> package it up. Oh wow. Put my name on it, send it to yourself. I thought of that. I thought of that. I was gonna do that. Even you bill know, me. Try to use my mind mail to, to think like Greg. What would Greg order? WWGO. Uh, what? What? Let's just uh, a hypothetical. Mm -hmm. What would you put in my sympathy basket? Well, that's the hard part, right? Yeah. Thinking of something meaningful. Mm -hmm. I could get you some uh, grade Z jelly beans that nobody else wanted <laughs> from the bin. Yeah. I that could get you some cheese that and crackers. Been, that cheese the, and crackers, okay. Cheese and crackers that the best show <laughs> sent you. The the Father's Day tie of uh, consolation gift of uh, not consolation gifts but grieving gifts, condolences. The the Father's Day here, Dad. Here's a tie. I hate you. Gift of condolences, cheese and crackers. Um, but here's a, a chance for you to put a stamp of originality on it. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, so what? What would your be? Well, what would be your original to top that? Let me tell you. When I think of my list, I used to think of three things: Jersey. I don't want to hear this? <laughs> I say that with affection. What would you say the first one was? Jersey. Jersey. Okay. Um, music. Uh huh. I, I used to think of books, but after. The after To Kill a Mockingbird Gate, I'm pausing that. I would I would think of something you you some something musical. Okay. We had some great memories together over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I, if I put the minimal Greg thought into it, and it would have something to do with that. <laughs> That's the minimal. <laughs> now, if I wanted to do less than the minimal, I would just cheese and crackers. <laughs> Candy nobody wants after Easter. De how about something De local? Defective, defective from, candy. How about something from from Virginia? Give it a little bit of a local flavor. Is there something you could uh, represent Virginia with? You could send to me, saying, you know, well, here's a little I mean, taste of Virginia. I know you're up, you're stuck up in Jersey, which you're not a fan of, but uh, I'm living high on the hog down here. Not in Jersey. What do you mean? No, I'm saying you're living high on the hog down in Virginia. Mm -hmm. Let me let me show you how great things are down yeah. here. I'll well, send I'm, you. Well, I'm little... in Northern Virginia slash DC, uh -huh. which is like paying New York prices without being in New York City. Uh, <laughs> That's what I said. I, I, high I on guess, the hog. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I love my home state, but I don't really. I don't. I don't think anybody when they think of me, they think of Virginia, right? Like. Well, you're yeah, you you bounced around, but I mean, right. I mean, I, live, I, th I, I think mean, of I my think of Virginia. Defining adult years were Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. That's when you met me. Mm -hmm. Like, like, yes, you are Jersey to the bone. I don't know if anybody thinks of me as Virginia to the bone. And I say that I I love mm -hmm. Virginia, but I don't mm -hmm. think anybody. Do you, do you think that? I do. I mean, you know, you a lot of people in Brooklyn are transplants. You know. Everybody's I mean, a transplant. Yeah. 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 I mean, they're, they're, yeah. All, all the true New York people, all the true Brooklyn people have mm -hmm. since exited. Uh, you don't hear people with that thick New York accent anymore, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, Cindy There's Lauper. Archie Bunker in Waynesburg. <laughs> Cindy Lauper and yeah. Flip Mahoney. Everybody, all my friends all throughout my 15 years, I think one, I had one close friend that grew up there is from there. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, but OK, I hear what you're saying. And I'm putting you down for one Virginia ham. Boom. <laughs> there. Thank you. OK. I don't have to think right. about this again. OK. So just make done, sure I go to Amazon. Tap, tap, tap Virginia ham. Ship it to Mike for free. Done. I don't have to uh -huh. hear about this. Uh -huh. You're really right. make you're really making me bummed out <laughs> that your father died. All mm -hmm. right. This is really mm -hmm. bumming me out. Yeah. Bums me out. Virginia ham. <laughs> Should we just get to your your latest beef, Tom Petty? Fuck Tom Petty. You know, 
I've had it with Tom Petty. Here we go. And, here we go. And uh, recent events have made me even more miffed at him. Oh my god! Uh, do you first of all do you remember that the documentary is running down a drain? Was that the one? I, I think I'm confused. I think I, I've seen a couple documentaries about him. Is that well, the one that was on Showtime? It was like four hours. Yeah, I'm, I'm lots sure. of Gary Shandling in it. Yes. Uh, yeah, I so enjoyed I, that. I haven't seen it in a few years, but I remember just m m the beady little eyes rolling out of my head. It seemed it was a beat for beat of Bruce. The exact same. Everything that happened in his Born to Run doc happened in Tom Petty's, which is so perfect because Tom Petty is basically a watered down Bruce Springsteen. Even the third album has to make a break. Um, oh, he's in fighting against the record company. Blah, 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 blah. So already, I couldn't care less. Then I was listening to a podcast on it the other day because, uh, you know, I want to spend an hour shitting on it. And they made a great point. Every time, every person they bring up with him uh, started out like, oh, we're going to work with Tom Petty. But then he either steals a band member, steals a song. And every time it's the exact same thing, the cam work. Uh, the person is like, oh, Tom did this, Tom did that. And then Tom just cuts to Tom Petty and he's like, Mike got over it. And then we're all, and then everybody laughs and claps and we all love Tom Petty for being an asshole. And I'm sorry, he's dead. I don't want anybody to be dead, but it's watered down. I don't want to say Springsteen. I'd say watered down Melon Camp, boring, blah. Blah, blah, music. I don't know how any of these songs. American Girl is a pretty good song. How How is Breakdown a hit? It sounds uh, like a song you're just waiting between real songs. It's only got uh, it's only got 90, 91 million plays on Spotify. Oh, well, okay. How about, I'm sorry. How about Mary, Mary Jane's Last Dance? 270 oh, million plays. Song. Oh, my, my. Uh, uh. Learning to Fly. 217 million plays. Good for you. You got ripped off by the Foo Fighters. But you know what? You know what it pisses me off even more? Refugee, 87 million. Who cares? People love this music. Celine Dion sold He's more got than great that. songs. We, you want me to love am I supposed to love Celine Dion now? I'm not saying he, he's not popular. I'm saying I don't get it. His songs are boring as fuck. And then he went on to do that thing where he does a solo album. And yeah. then guess who played on the solo album? Yeah, the band. The band. Yeah. And it's the same, it's the same, exact same Tom Petty songs. Now I'll give you, it's but easily his best album, but he pulls that, oh, it's a solo album nonsense. But which, which solo? Which al album are you talking about? Running uh Full Moon Fever. Full Moon, yeah. And Wildflowers. I think they're both great albums. Wildflowers is not a great album. It came, uh, they had the big anniversary came out a couple of years ago. Everybody's in love with it, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but then I was reminding, reminded of him today. Have you seen this Ed Sheeran music copyright news? Well, yeah, he's, he's something's yeah. It, it, it's not Tom. It's uh, who, the, it's, it's Ma Marvin, Marvin Gaye. Gay people. Yeah, Marvin Gaye. Yeah, who sued Robin Thicke or whatever a couple of years? Yeah, they won. But basically, what's happening now is. Everybody's just throwing out lawsuits on every song that comes down the pike because why not? Uh, everyone's going to settle instead of go to court because it may use the same three chords or progression or whatever. Um, but it, but remember when Sam Smith, whoever that is, got in trouble for ripping off a Tom Petty song a couple of years ago, 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. So first of all, that was complete garbage. Just because it used the same three chords progression that 9,000 other songs, um, Tom Petty's people have to sue him. But not only does Tom Petty win and get his money, which was never disclosed, I'm sure it's not 100 bucks, afterwards, after he shits all over this, this poor guy who made the mistake of uh, using known uh, musical notes, uh, then he puts out a statement. Hey, guys, hey, guys, take it easy on Sam. You know, it's cool. We're OK now. We're square. I'm like, really? 
Dick, why didn't you do that before while you're sitting on your $9 billion? This anodyne song that sounds like a million other songs. Uh, I'm sorry, Tom Petty. Do you want some musical theorist to peel apart your brilliant songs? That's so original. Yeah, I bet we can't find anything in that in those that we could sue over. Fuck Tom Petty. I'm sorry. I know he's American royalty and he's dead. I'm sorry. But I don't want to hear it. He's boring as fuck. He's an asshole. Can I speak? Hmm? No, well, you got more numbers? <laughs> you got more no. numbers? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I had no I, idea I, that people, people bought us out or songs. Yeah. Let, let, let me let me say this. The one thing I'll agree with you, I I saw the I only saw Tom Petty uh, live once, and it was when the replacements were opening up for him. Uh, and mainly, yeah, the replacements were more of a draw for me than Tom Petty. So I go to this show. It's another classic replacements tank job, giant flop. You know, instead of t taking an opportunity to try and win over an audience of people who probably, yeah, they, they were indifferent. They were indifferent. I give you that. The crowd That's was right. indifferent. Okay. Can we focus on shitting on Tom Petty? Uh -huh. No. Well, but it's part. It's I'm, I'm getting there. Okay. So, yeah. So the, the replacements do a tank job. Uh, Tom Petty comes out. And he's doing these songs. And I, I beg to differ. He's got more great songs and so many other mm -hmm. bands that he deserves to be up there as one of America's best. You're putting him up with Bruce Springsteen? Oh, yeah, definitely. Really? Yeah. You're putting up with CCR? Yeah. The Ramones? It's funny. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny you're, you're, you're mentioning these bands. Yeah, I'll put him up there with the Ramones. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's huge. I think he, I think he's great. Well, I'm not, Those I'm not songs. talking about how popular he is. I'm saying do you think? I think they're popular because they're great songs. He's got a lot of them. Uh -huh. He's had a, he had a, a, an enduring career. This is lifetime. He had a lifetime career because uh -huh. he kept putting out quality music. Uh -huh. He didn't go through all these lulls that some some uh -huh. other artists go through. Lots of great great artists start you know in mm -hmm. their later years. They're Kind of flopping around, he, you know. He was fairly consistent most of his career. He didn't. Mm -hmm. He yeah. He didn't change much. You can, you can maybe use that against him. Well, no, I don't mind. He didn't change. He, he was boring to begin with. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you could say Bruce didn't. Bruce doesn't change a lot either. Mm -hmm. You could argue. Yeah. I I I come up because this is a food show. <laughs> I came up with uh, meat and potatoes rock. I put him, you, you mentioned John Fogarty, definitely Meat and Potatoes Rock. I've seen him live. You know what? He plays the songs like Tom Petty, just like the records. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I worked a, a Bob Seger show. He's got lots of great songs, one head after another. He plays them the way people remember him. Tom mm -hmm. Petty did that at the show I saw. And it was, you know, not particularly thrilling, the weirdest moment actually was at the end. He does an encore. He does "Should I Stay or Should I Go" as an encore, <laughs> and that gets the crowd up. That got the crowd up and, and cheering. <laughs> no, I, I knew I knew this would have this effect on you. That's why I, I I sort of left it to the end. But did I ever go see him again? No, because no. I felt no, like no, okay. He he's a he's a he's a a live jukebox when you see him. He plays the hits just like the records. But That's I fine. don't have anything against that. I don't have anything against but, that. Let me ask you a question. Springsteen does the same thing. You'll beg to differ, but you know, yeah. Well, what does Springsteen throw? A story in the middle of something? But the song. I don't are, mind playing the hits like you. The hits if the hits mm -hmm. weren't just dull to begin with. Uh -huh. Let me ask you something. Other than American Girl which does have a different status for him. That is the Tom Petty, we're in America. The terrorists have lost because of this song. Other than that, is there another Tom Petty song that is, I don't care if you have to piss your pants, you're not missing. I think they're all good. I mean, he's got solid hits. They're all good, but is there any other song that you cannot, I mean, like Bruce, Born to Run, there's nobody in the troughs in the men's room. There's 10 of those songs. Uh -huh. Mary's Place, 
get a towel and let's go take a shower. Bunch of those. But there's at least 10 brew songs. You're not going to take a whiz. Other than American Girl, how many Tom Petty songs are there? Did you, did you I'm, say, I'm saying he's if got... This, you would be furious. I'm saying he's got 20, he's got 20 solid hits. One, mm -hmm. He can just peel them off, one after the other. Solid mm -hmm. hits. His greatest hits album, <clears throat> it's great. You know, beginning to end. There's no stiffs in there. He's not padding that thing out. He's got he's got the hits. He's put in the work. Um, Hold on, can I do an imitation? Of you? He's got the hits. He put in the work. But you didn't answer my question. Of all those hits, how many are like, if you find out you missed one, you're, you're furious the whole ride home. You missed Breakdown? Are you? I missed uh, Running Down a Dream. That's got a great opening. Can, mm -hmm. can, can you think of another song that has such a great opening? Guitar riff in it? Yeah, I should, mean, I stay should I stay or should I go? What's that? Should I stay or should I go? Stay or should I go? Won't back down. Oh my God. I got so sick of that song after he died. It's like uh -huh. it's like Florida was just waiting for reasons to sing that song. And that oh, that's the one that they accused Sam Smith of stealing. It's like, oh, we've well, never heard this before. You wreck me? It's a rocking song. Dumb. That's a dumb, that's a terrible. That that is a that is a I'm 48. I need to put a rocker out there song. Come on. Come on, Mike. You're better than this. Come on. Come on. I look up to you, Mike. Don't do this. <laughs> if I look up to you like this, think about the children, the kids out there. But plus, plus, yeah, you watch this documentary and it starts dawning on you. I'm like, for some reason, he has this ability to just kind of swoop in, be a complete asshole, swoop back out, and everybody's like, yeah, Tom really screwed me, but isn't he great? And I, mean, I haven't inspired. seen that. I haven't seen that in a long time. I don't remember that he came off as being an asshole in it. But I mean, I, I remember he he seems he seems like high through the whole thing. Um, you know, and there's a lot of sort of his his eyes seem half open. He seems like it'd be cool. Like if he came in, would be hanging out. He'd be super cool. But then after he leaves, you find out he's stolen your girlfriend. <laughs> he subletted your apartment. I, I, yeah, I, and, I you and, know, and all, and all your CDs are missing. I don't I don't remember him coming across. But for that some life. reason we'd all sit around going, wow, wasn't that great? Tom is so awesome. I don't remember that documentary that way. But uh, you know, I listened to some some of the uh you thought those guys were gonna be shitting on Tom Petty. I don't know that you even listened to it. At the end, they're they're praising him. They're saying how great he is. They said that like uh the one guy said his four year old came in and started watching it. And then the the other guy said that his uh, father came in and he's watching it. He's not even a music fan. Oh, so a four year old. This, this, and this an is what old I'm man talking about. So Tom Petty has this mass appeal, uh, and I don't know how you can just you know dismiss that that he doesn't appeal to anybody. His music doesn't appeal to anybody. That it you know that it, everybody's bored by it. So your argument is a four year old and a grandpa <laughs> liked it. I would say that sounds about exactly right. <laughs> if you're a four-year-old, I'm sure Petty's great. And if you're the greatest generation, I'm sure uh -huh. if you want to be our, the rocker, Boomer, you love Petty. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll have to. You listen to, to that, you listen to the you actually listen to the podcast. I listened to it. I was skipping around because I mean, you you represented it uh, as it, it was an hour of shitting on Tom Petty. It wasn't. Did you listen to it? That's my question. Good question. I'm trying to think right now. <laughs> no, no. I don't think you listened to it. I listened to it. They, they, they weren't they were ones who reminded me that he had, seemed to have this gift of being a complete asshole, but people just kind of nodded along. Oh, uh -huh, all mm -hmm. right. That's my house. Oh, you got it now. All right. Break that. So, so you don't you don't judge the people, the artists, just by their creations. You gotta like know more about their personal life, and if you hear one bad thing about the guy, you know you're gonna you're gonna hold it against him. Well, I have thirty years of being bored out of my mind by Tom Petty, so when I find out he's an asshole, I can't pretend I'm not kind of gleeful about it. 
All right. Um, again, I'm sorry he's dead. Nobody wanted him to die. I would I would have been fine with him cruising along for the next 40 years doing his, you know, here's the, oh, my, my, oh, hell, you know, you won't back down. I don't want him to die. I didn't want him to die. But I'm just baffled at at the uh, level of, you know, genuflecting this guy gets. Mm-hmm. And then and then he dragged us. Come on, he dragged us all through this mud crutch thing. Oh, I'm gonna get my first band back together. And oh, gee, Capital wants to put out a record. Oh, they must really love the music. It's not because I am Tom Petty. We had to, we had to drag us for that bullshit. Come on, it's called, it's called trying different things. It wasn't a different it's, thing. It's, it's, it was, it's, it's, it was it's, the it's, same it's, crappy music, but with a couple of different guys, and it was a better story. Uh-huh. But it's like, oh, the record company loves it. Mm-hmm. Really? Not a bad record. Here we go. Not Dude. a bad record. He's consistent. The crutch record. He, he, he's if consistent. If it wasn't Tom Petty, would this have seen? Not not just a lighter day. If it had not just if it's Tom Petty, if it had if it had reached the offices of someone who could have turned it into gold, would they have picked that album? No, he he wants to do his own thing. I mean, mm-hmm. Neil Young is always doing his own thing. Yeah, yeah. We we we've we've determined you 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 like well, two two songs. Is that how many songs you like, Neil Young? Three. Or you're you're up to three. Okay, well, progress. It's always been. I three. think it was always two. I thought it was two songs when we started this. No, I got you three. up to three songs. After the Garden, Rockin' in the Free World, and Helpless. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I introduced you to Helpless. I think that wasn't on your list at first. I mean, I've always loved it, but if you want credit, happy to <laughs> happy to send it your way. Uh, I'm willing to put a bow. I think we're seeing a pattern here, though. Neil Young, now Tom Petty. Who, who we might as well just get it out in the open. Who are some other the beloved? You probably hate Bob Seger too, right? I like Bob Seger. I can know you like Bob Seger. Seger. Okay, that's interesting I mean, I because only, I, only, I only know the the hits, mm-hmm. and Bob Seger just doesn't seem to have this. Uh, hagiography about him uh, other than he he's he's you know he's from Detroit he plays his ass off he rocks the house every night he doesn't mm-hmm. have this hagiography that uh, Tom Petty has everybody he's touched in the studio with his genius when it's like just the next song, the next Tom Petty song I've never heard anything bad about Bob Seger am I listening to his albums the deep cuts no mm-hmm. How about John Mellencamp? John Mellencamp, I I, I couldn't care less about his music. Mm-hmm. Fine, uh, you could. I may be a little. See, I, I I started off really hating him. Uh, Jack and Diane, that song just drove me well, nuts. Well, when I when when those songs were out, they were just out on the radio all the time. Yeah, you couldn't get yeah. away from. Them. Right, I couldn't get away from Jack and Diane. It was, and it was I I, um, I really sort of grew to hate it, uh, but. You know, then he sort of won me over a little bit uh, yeah. with uh, he had that string of uh, Scarecrow, Lonesome Jubilee. I like those songs better than um, Human Highway is a decent out. Uh, not Human Highway. What's it? Uh, human Centipede. <laughs> not Human Centipede. I, I like I like like the Scarecrow stuff. I like the stuff just after the Jack and Diane stuff. Mm hmm. Pink Houses. Uh, yeah, I don't mind right. Mellencamp. Again, uh-huh. I'm not digging into his albums. He shows up on Howard Stern every couple of years, and he's had another heart attack and refuses to quit smoking. <laughs> I kind of like that. I, I like the fact that he had yeah. this insanely beautiful wife for like 20 years, and she finally left him like 10 years ago. I don't, I don't know what you have to do to be John Mellencamp and have all these wives leave you. He uh, hasn't stopped. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm looking through his... Uh... There's so many records. I mean, I I kind of stopped listening after. Uh, let me get to I, I, this. Is Human Wheels? What was that Human Wheels? I think is a that that's a solid record. But then I kind of lost touch with him. But he's plugging away. Uh, I seen him open for uh, Bob Dylan was doing one of his summer uh, minor league stadium tours, and he had Willie Nelson and and John Mellencamp on the same bill. That was a, a nice show. It was pouring rain when it happened, unfortunately. But uh, he put on a good show. 
I, I got no beef with uh, the Coug. I, I don't feel like people take him as seriously <laughs> as they want to take Tom Petty, which I guess bugs me. But it's weird. I, I think I think uh, you're in a you re, you're, I think you're in a real like your your disdain for Neil Young. You're in a real really whoa, small whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on. small group of people. My disdain who, who, for Neil Young is different than my disdain for Tom Petty. The Neil Young thing, I, I just can't hear his music. It's just all blurs together. Mm-hmm. I don't have a thing with him. Petty is the combination of crappy music, boring as fuck music, and yet this <laughs> uh, <laughs> view from people that he's some sort of, uh, that he deserves all of this genius uh, as a songwriter, the great American songwriter. And like I said, then he pissed me off with the whole he lets hangs this Sam Smith guy, who I keep referring to as if I know know who he is. Uh, hangs him out to dry, and then wants to be Mister Cool Guy after soaking the guy, taking every penny because of some song that sounded like every other song in the world. Um, I forget the office, name of this song, uh, but it, it was an right obvious. Right it was an obvious one, though. I mean, anybody in that studio when he when he put that. I'm song, sorry. When anybody, anybody in that studio should have known, wait a second, this song sounds like a Tom Petty song. No, you know, nobody felt it, that. It way. wasn't like Tom Petty, some obscure guy that no. he could feel like he could pull it off. No, I mean, nobody just, nobody just, who just heard like that the, song thought that, except until somebody thought, huh, we could probably maybe make some money off this. No, it's obvious. It's obvious. I, I, I didn't huh. hear it when it came out, but when I heard it, I'm like, yeah, he, he, that's that's the Tom Petty song. Okay, then and, and any they should have known that when they recorded it. Somebody should have like had the sense, just like the other idiots who, who ripped off Marvin yeah. Gaye. That's a rip off too. Number one, I I wholeheartedly disagree with you, uh, and that would mean <laughs> like Ed Sheeran was saying. I can't believe I'm reading Ed Sheeran. <laughs> um, at, at some point, you just have to stop recording songs because, again, if I am a music publisher, I'm just throwing out lawsuits, blanket lawsuits. Oh, I, I this one uses a G to a D. Oh, well, gee whiz, you better pay me. That's such nonsense. Plus, again, I have a feeling as someone who has written a song in his lifetime, if we peeled apart these uh, uh, complex, petty gems over the years, I have a feeling a musicologist could tell us that they're the exact same as a lot million other songs before that. So Tom Petty, of all people, Shouldn't be, you know, oh, I invented music. Fuck you. Uh, okay. Let me put a bow on the Tom Petty hate. <laughs> I want to reiterate uh-huh. that as much bullshit as his solo album is, mm-hmm. uh, it is a good album in terms of it's a collection of 12 songs, most of which I enjoyed listening to when it came out. Um, the rest of it's nonsense. Oh, it's a solo album, even though it uses the same band. Um, and Neil Young... And Coog never dragged us through this. Oh, all of a sudden, everybody's interested in my teenage band or whatever nonsense. Come on. When was the the turning moment? Was there a, a song that like finally tipped tipped you over into this, or was it from the get go? Did you hear like one? The first Tom Petty song, like like I said, Jack and Diane could have turned me against John Mellencamp for the, forever because mm-hmm. I really hated that song. And, and like you said, you couldn't get away from it. I couldn't get away from it. I hear about that damn chili dog all the time. Tasty yeah. freeze, bro. <laughs> this is a food show. So I got you see okay. how I brought it back. Ooh, look at you. Chili dog. <laughs> uh, no, there wasn't Suck, anything. It's sucking just... on that chili dog. Outside of Tasty Freeze. <laughs> Uh-huh. There wasn't uh, a moment. I've just, I've never loved him. He's always been fine. It happened it's in Williamsburg. Like, we had the turkey's nest one afternoon, and somebody's playing too many Tom Petty songs, and then yeah, it's annoying. Like, you just flip, you flipped, down. you flipped out. It, it's going to be breakdown. The waiting, and I'm waiting for you to do a song that's mildly interesting. Uh, Refugee, uh, even the losers is okay. I, I, I kind of like that one. Uh, don't like the opening riff to running down a dream. No, that, that doesn't I like, do I like running down a dream. Okay, all right. I like that. I like a lot of songs on that album. Uh, but it was always just a like mild, I don't understand it, but uh, fine. 
Uh, and then, you know, so over the years, and then maybe culminated watching that stupid documentary where, you know, he's the most self-important person in the world. He's fighting the record company, not for himself, but for the world. And on and on. The whole time I'm thinking, I just saw this beat for beat with the Bruce documentary, which I didn't like either, because that those those ones are nonsense. Which uh, one is that? Which one is that? Wings for Wheels, the Born to Run. Well, and the Darkness one. I mean, I love Bruce, but how many times can we, everybody's going, Bruce was searching for something. Bruce was really going for something. <laughs> how many right. times do we need, yeah, yeah, yeah. you no, know, I, I have been, uh, or little Steven going, yeah, Bruce sees songs as cinematic landscapes. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Like, come on. <laughs> Yeah, so so your beef is more with the documentary. I don't, you know, you just laid out a bunch of songs you like, you kind of like. The documentary you can go on. Help, you know then, them all. And then this, well, I live on Earth, so you can't help but know them all. The same way I know uh, sucking on chili dog outside the Tasty Freeze. <laughs> Am I putting it on? No, it's just burned into my skull because uh -huh. uh -huh. I'm a human being on Earth. Um, and then and then this podcast, uh, which I, which I'll listen to later. Don't worry about it. <laughs> You're not going to be pleased because you know they're not shitting on him no, for they, now. They reminded me of this weird thing about him. Again, he would just swoop in. Hey, it's Tom Petty. Great. Oh shit, where's my wallet? Oh, isn't Tom Petty great? He stole my wallet. I love him. Yeah, I haven't Plus, seen that doc. Again, I, I don't remember the documentary the way you're presenting it. I don't remember him coming off as a bad guy. I thought he came off as like this dude who's like high half the time. <laughs> and you know, know hey it, it, you know and then he goes in the studio cranks out these hits i mean it seemed like a pretty good life here's what hurts those teeth if he was a woman he would definitely be up my street mm -hmm. he looks a little bit like a better looking laverne laverne defazia that's the track i don't know, I don't know where we're going i with could this. be in love with him i don't know i don't know about this uh but oh, and uh, he's and he indirectly is ruining while my guitar gently weeps because he's up there playing with his buddy Jeff Lynn, playing an incredible song, boring AF. And that's when Prince came up and did his thing, which is remarkable. Mm -hmm. I love it too. I have eyes and ears. Every six months, I go down yeah, the how, how did Tom Petty ruin that? He's laid back. He laid back. Because now, I, it occurred to me, there's entire generations are going to be growing up now thinking that's why my guitar gently weeps, which while Prince's part is amazing, the other eight minutes is Tom Petty and his buddy Jeff Lynn with their acoustic guitars. Why my guitar? So anybody... Born after the year 1990 is going to think, yeah, while my guitar gently weeps, that Beatles song that sucks, except for Prince's two minutes, that's all they're going to ever think of that song. And rightfully so. I, know. I, I think all this music will be forgotten in about 20 years. They'll be on to something else. I mean, I think this meat and potatoes rock I'm talking about is already fading. You know, I, uh, so. I don't, I, don't, I don't see the longevity that you see for a lot of this music. Um, I don't care about the longevity. It's lo lasted this long. If it goes away tomorrow, I don't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All I right. mean, that's, but that's what they said about rock and roll back in the 60s. Oh, it'll be over mm -hmm. soon. It'll be over soon. I'm sorry. Once you've well, you, well, yeah, that classic, classic rock thing, like Petty, you, you'll live forever. Yeah, well, classic rock, as long as classic rock radio is still going, mm -hmm. uh, people have a hard time of letting that go. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. I, I don't think young people are really seeking out this music. I think, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's going to it's going to fade in a couple of generations. Um, that's that's all popular music. It fades, you know, something new comes in. gets people excited. But uh, I have to agree to agree that you don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> all right. On to the uh, the food portion of the show. This week, uh, we went with, I, I thought I was going to get shrimp with cashew nuts. And at the last minute, I went with chicken with cashew nuts. I, uh -huh. I know you, well, I, I had the shrimp dish last week. I was like, you know, mm -hmm. let's mix it up a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And this way I can compare mine to yours straight up. 
because I knew you weren't getting the shrimp. Oh, you don't have to say it. You don't have to say it like that, Mike. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you wiped out half <laughs> half the menu with your anti seafood. Uh, so yeah, we're 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 getting down to the we're you know slim pickings as to what we can do each week. So we went with the uh, chicken with cashew nuts. You you seem displeased in a tweet I saw earlier. Uh, did not like the look of it. I mean it it looked all right to me. Well, it did look all right. And I give it points for when I opened it, it wasn't drenched in goop. Right. It had its own sauce, but it yeah. was, I was like, oh, that looks all right. Yeah. There were no mushrooms. Okay. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> but then when I tasted it, and I think I had, to be fair, I have to blame the right where I got it because it, it just tasted like, and usually I'm not sensitive to stuff like this. You know me, I have a taste buds like a like a cat dead cow. And it tasted like it had just been fried in oil that had sat there cooking fish for like 20 years. The actual taste was disgusting, but it, it tasted like trash. And I don't mean like, oh, that's trash, <laughs> like I do most weeks. I mean literally like burnt trash. Trash. Which I think I would have to blame. The establishment. Is that what you would think? Yeah, mine was fine. I I I I can't believe you you haven't zeroed in on like one particular well, well, place. Well, I was having such a nice time the previous two or three weeks. Uh, all um, right, this place you you had good dishes. But they didn't have a cashew chicken, so wow. But um but but then there's a nice twist. Cause you know me, I like to bring the sunshine. Mm -hmm. No apologies for that. Uh, I never before seen where you could order lo mein as a side. Do you do that? Lo mein as a side. Yeah, I never. What do they give you what do they give you less? Yeah, it's like a small lo mein instead oh, of a rice. Tiny container. Yeah, like like large, small, maybe a small container. That's weird. And so I was like, all right, I'll I try that, and just to be safe, so I wouldn't starve, I got French fries. <laughs> Well, you know how much how I like to brag about how great Chinese food French fries are. Mm -hmm. Not today. <laughs> they just melted glops of potato. They fully steamed. Uh -huh. not, they weren't crispy. They weren't crunchy. There uh, were no yeah. riches. Just soggy. Soggy. Thank you, Michael. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just like, what do I? And the lo mein turns out had the same ashtray taste. Oh my god. As the chicken. So I was uh -huh. like, what am I going to do? So on a whim, I said, you know what? Let me do an egg food with Frankenstein. <laughs> I took the egg food young. And the egg food young. That's my Freudian slip right there. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just combined it. I just got a fork, some lo mein, jammed it in with some French fries, starch on starch, <laughs> white starch on starch, <laughs> ground it all in soy sauce. Oh, man. And, uh, it was fine. You made it work. I made it work. Uh huh. Wow. The chicken was unsalvageable. That's sad. And you paid twenty dollars for this. Yeah, and it was like eighteen dollars just for the the chicken. Oh my god. That they scraped out of the the dumpster. Oh my god. So wow. I'm trying to I'm trying to be positive. And say I like <laughs> I like knowing that lo mein is a side. <laughs> And combining with French fries, but yeah, I, I cannot give this thing more than like a three point one. With a okay. caveat, I would be willing to try it at a different place. Mm -hmm. See, I've I've sort of uh, walked into this one place, and now I'm I'm going. They have a lunch special. I get uh, vegetable fried rice with it, and I get uh, soup. All for under nine bucks. Mm -hmm. So mine was good. I enjoyed it. The chicken was nice chunks of chicken. Mm -hmm. uh, no mushrooms, as you said. Uh, its own sauce, not the not the goop. Mm -hmm. um, so it was enjoyable. I uh, I even have some for leftovers. I'll, I'll have have leftovers. 
Uh, okay, two meals out of it for less than nine bucks. All right. And you know, keep calling <laughs> on the good news, Mike. And uh, I'll give it a solid seven and a half, 7.5. Wow. I want to be shocked, but I think if I had gotten from a different place, I don't think I would have done seven five, but that sounds reasonable. Let me ask you this, though. Well, well, for one thing, how come, again, I've asked this before, every other dish, automatic mushrooms. But all yeah. of a sudden, they're like, whoa, whoa, no mushrooms on the cashew chicken. Uh-huh. Which I I'm think, pleased with, but it doesn't really make sense. Uh -huh. but, well, I, I had the uh, unidentified, and now I, I'm pretty sure it is squash. Somebody identified it as squash. I had I had some squash in this this dish. Um, in the cashew chicken? Yeah. Squash? Yeah. Huh. That was that un unidentified uh, item in last week's that I wasn't sure what it what is this? It's it's like orange looking, but it's got a different sort of spongy well, texture. Who identified it? Somebody on Twitter, and I, yes. I, I agree. I agree. That's probably what it is. I, I'm I don't pretty see a sure. lot of squash in Chinese food, do you? I, you know, I don't know. Maybe in some different regions they do it differently, right? I mean, you know, they don't all do it. it, it you know, it's a big country, so I think there's room for variation. Um, how are your uh, cashew nuts? Were they up to snuff or below standard? I mean. To me, were, the, the cashew, where do you stand with the nuts? Have we had a nuts talk yet? We haven't had a nuts talk. The cashews are fine other than they were covered in this ashtray, ass flavor, that the chicken was. Uh -huh. uh, cashews are fine. But when you say vegetable, I think I get confused. When when you say vegetable fried rice, is that just fried rice but with no meat? Or Because when I hear that, I immediately think, oh, it's fried rice but with like extra weird vegetables. Well, there's the uh, you always get little uh, pieces of carrots, right? Right. Uh, and uh, peas. I like if there's peas. I, I didn't pick it apart. I think yeah. Onions. But <laughs> but you think it's just fried rice without meat? Yeah, it's fried rice without meat. Yeah, I think it, I, you know there may even be a little egg in there. Yeah. Uh huh. For some reason, when I hear vegetable fried rice, I think oh they're going to add vegetables, mm -hmm. which I don't necessarily want if they're weird vegetables but <laughs> and the weird vegetables are uh most of them <laughs> I, I like peas raw onions egg yeah there's onions in this yeah there's onions in it um scallions i like scallions in my mm -hmm. fried rice mm -hmm. anything after that the carrots I, I like carrots but only if they're fully cooked which they, mm -hmm. nobody seems to do yeah, you went on a rant about the little cubes, yeah, before. Well, because every you bite and that's all you can feel. <laughs> yeah, there weren't big, big hunks of carrot in, in, in my uh, vegetable fried rice. Uh, when I get uh, next week's dish, I'll pick it apart and uh, give you a full analysis <laughs> of uh, what vegetables. Pick it, pick it up on the sarcasm, Mike. <laughs> now, this was our, our second dish with nuts in it. Uh, we had the... Uh, Kung Po. Uh, so I thought this was a step up with the cashews. What kind I, of nuts did that have? I think that had peanuts. Um, there are, yeah, there are dishes with peanuts I've had before, Chinese dishes. Let's see if I can have that's my score in that. <laughs> Kung Pao. <laughs> oh, I gave that a 6'8. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't remember. That was back in their early days. So this was young men. <laughs> They were young men during the Kung Pao days. <laughs> yeah, before I went gray. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it was sandwiched. I see it was sandwiched between two scores, a one and a 0.5. So I give you credit for keeping a, uh, yeah, I do not have my uh, numbers handy. <laughs> well, it looks like I've got about half of them. <laughs> but but the, the idea of nuts in a, uh, you're not against the, the nuts in a dish. Not You don't get a lot of nuts in other dishes. Right. I was trying to think, I mean, sometimes you'll see them in like salads, right? I mean, um, you certainly I, I nuts. I like most nuts, so I yeah. don't mind if they show up. I'm trying to think of an example where they're really obtrusive. Uh, but yeah, yeah, usually I don't mind them. Mm -hmm. Like the like the cashews were not the problem. 
to mm -hmm. today's dish. Yeah. I didn't I didn't think so. No. But how can you screw up, you know, chicken it's got to be I mean every other every other order I'm assuming has chicken in it. And I, I they can't they can't great. even get the chicken right? Again, I'm usually not sensitive to this kind of stuff, but I, I think it was just one of these things. They haven't cleaned their grills or whatever. They the grease just it just tasted like something was wrong with the. I, I think it's time you you find another place. This this sounds like a deal breaker. Plus, you're getting ripped off. That, well, that's I can't just, even, uh, you, you're getting yeah. ripped off, man. So I throw it all away, and, and then I got aggravated because the, the, the guy that brought it to me. Well, I can't blame the the guy, but they wrapped it. And plastic such that the, the plastic barely covered the stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not like a bag and it's swinging and yeah, it was like a, a tiny bag. A tiny, like just they were able to just tie it off. <laughs> so usually, if the bag's big enough, you know, you just rip it open, right. do whatever you're gonna do, and afterwards you can just throw it all back in the bag and throw it in the trash. But for this, it's like I realized after I ripped the bag because you know I'm not gonna untie it and whatever. Uh, then to throw, put it all in the bag, I've got to somehow, it's like painting it all over again. I had to try to get it in the bag that, that was unusable at this point because it was perfectly <laughs> molded to the to the packaging. Uh -huh. So that was a pain in the ass. And so you had packaging problems on top of everything. Yeah, wow. just give me yeah. a normal bag. Don't like, oh, make it so that the second I touch it, it snaps apart. <laughs> like I'm never going to throw anything away. Uh-huh. So that that didn't help. I don't, I don't want to say that worked in the score, but it aggravated it, it aggravated me. <laughs> yeah, no. So that it didn't sounds, help. The overall experience sounds uh, horrible. Yeah, I think you're right. I think I am going to have to notice this place, make a note of it, and just not go back to it. Yeah, no. You got to think about up. it. Was satisfying. The packaging, the price, the the food. Other than my brilliance of combining lo mein. And French fries, you want to say I'm a hero for that? You want to say that's incredible? Sure. <laughs> Other than that, that's it for this place. So what is the low main in like a coleslaw uh no, I container? Got it, no, I got it. I got it. If I can be a little ray of sunshine here, uh, it's just noodles. Period. Just noodles. Okay. So I, I can't complain about that. I and mean, then they still had that weird taste, but uh, I think in the future, I may kind of sniff around and see if other places offer lo mein. And Jerry will tell us if they do or not, so I'm not worried <laughs> about that. Uh, it, it'll take care of that. I think it's it's as uh, Tom Petty once put it in his song. You mother From it. Wildflowers. Really? I think it's time to move on. Hey, lo mein. It's only got, uh, it's only got 24 million plays on Spotify. Oh well, then it must be good. Okay, coming up to twenty five. Hey, the Bible million. sold a lot. Should I be almost almost? That too? <laughs> oh, you know, you know who I would add to your <laughs> just to get a get a reaction from you. You know who I would add to we the should, we should do Bible potatoes. study. If we did another podcast, it'd be <laughs> Greg and Mike Bible study. <laughs> Meat and potatoes rock. I, I I did work a Paul McCartney show, and uh, I was in a good spot. I could hear the music perfectly, and. Uh, you know what? He's a uh, jukebox concert too. He plays the songs the way you you know them. He's not uh, revamping like a Bob Dylan. I don't have a or problem. Or Grateful Dead. You know, he, he just plays them straight. I don't have a problem and, with that. And he's got so many great songs, and you're content. So I, I compare him to Tom Petty. <laughs> I've never gone to see a uh -huh. band and thought, gee, I hope they don't play it like they do on the album. Uh -huh. Again, my point isn't that he's a jukebox at his shows. I'm just saying the songs in the jukebox were just dull to begin with. Mm -hmm. Now, you could say Dylan takes songs that are great, and now he just does whatever <laughs> he wants with them. That's a whole other thing. Uh -huh. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to keep bringing up Petty, I'll keep telling you how much he sucks. It's up to you. I mean, he's passed on, Mike. It's I don't know why you need to shit on him. I don't know why you can't you. let him go and rest in peace. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm singing his praises. You're the one who's uh, who's taking a dump. I'm going to go back and rewatch that documentary now. Now, just listen to his music. I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this documentary has soured you. I, I yeah. think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't remember it being so negative, but. Um... But it soured me. And again, I, I didn't like the music to begin with. So, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And it bugs me that under the right circumstances, he would have been a Miss Wilson. With those teeth, I love those chocolates, Mike. I love <laughs> no, those chocolates. Yeah, let's 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 get off that. Uh, I don't want to go there. Hey, let's eat, let them rest. Let's let's let let's let's talk go. about a hey, Greg's Greg's movie choice. Yes, which, uh, I couldn't find on streaming. I actually had to pay four bucks for this movie. <laughs> I know <laughs> you. I I know you like to yell at me for uh -huh. never being prepared. I want you to uh -huh. know I made some questions. Uh -huh. Okay. So, so the movie I picked was uh, The World's End, Good pick. which which I went in thinking, oh, this this is about a bar crawl. It's, I've got to find something to enjoy in this movie. And for the first forty minutes, I'm thinking, okay, you know, it, it's it's sort of a poor man's train spotting, right? These wild, these wild young men, you know. Mm -hmm. But now we we jump to the present. They're uh, pretty much all mature, have good jobs, except the ringleader. He's uh, floundering. We see him in an AA meeting. His life is is not really uh, been good. It's implied uh, he's had a tougher life than his his pals. So he gets this brainstorm, even though he's he's hasn't been drinking. That he's going. He wants to. Do the bar crawl again. And I'm like, okay, that sounds like a terrible idea. But uh hijinks, hijinks will ensue, and I'm up for it. I'm uh, I'm up for it. And I'm I'm thinking as it's going well, 40 minutes in, I'm like, okay, all these mature friends of his are like looking at him like, why are we here? why did you know why are we indulging this guy? And I'm like, okay, this might even go in like a mature direction. We're gonna see maybe this guy get a little self self awareness from his friends and maybe that you know it's going to be a wake up call you know and and it's going to be grounded in you know sort of reality but no 40 minutes in we're introduced to robots mm -hmm. and you alluded to fights <laughs> but you didn't allude to fights with robots I don't want to give it away, Mike. <laughs> but sometimes you got to give me that information. Well, I'm sorry, you, you know, I'm all you had to say, Wikipedia. <laughs> all you had to say was, this movie is full of people ripping the heads off of robots, and I'm I'm going to call them zombies. This is a zombie movie. Yeah, well, I don't it, know if I call them robots. Mm -hmm. Well, they're I mean, calling. Can, them, I mean, I don't know. They call them robots. Okay. Um. That's so, funny. but you know, it's a, this is a zombie movie. It turns out, yeah, the whole town is is crawling with these robots slash zombies, and then they got to fight their way out mm -hmm. to survive. Right, and it becomes this ridiculous thing. Poor, poor Pierce Brosnan was dragged into it. As soon as as soon as his his eyes turn turn blue, no question about him. As soon as his eyes turn blue. I've never, I generally don't, I stick it out for movies, even movies I don't like. I, I've never walked out on a movie. Have you ever walked out on a movie? Uh, yes. Oh, really? Two. Two? Which ones? Uh, I've told you about walking out on Dunkirk. Uh-huh. Just too okay. depressing, mm -hmm. even physically. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember leaving Midnight at the Garden of Good and Evil. Uh-huh. It's long, yeah, and it's like three I hours. I remember... I think I just didn't get it. It was weird. Uh -huh. I just, yeah. Uh, I, I remember wanting to walk out of uh, Born on the Fourth of July just because it was so depressing. Mm -hmm. uh, even though it's, I thought it at the time and still do it was a good movie. Uh -huh. uh, it was just so depressing. But those are the, the ones I remember walking out of. So as soon as Pierce Brosnan's eyes turned blue, I wanted to walk out on this movie in my own house here. I, you know, I, I, I literally just want, I just wanted to leave the room. You know, I'm like, <laughs> oh no, this, this, this. If I was at a theater, I think I would have walked out. This would have been a first for me. The ultimate um, insult. I, I didn't walk out on Natural Born Killers, but I wish I walked out on that movie. I hated hmm. that movie. Really? Yeah, I felt, I felt dirty after watching that movie. I'm like, oh, why did I give that movie any, any money? I felt like that was a mistake. All right. But yeah, that that I've never walked out of a movie I went to see in a the theater. Well, well, I'll say this. Um, 
this is part of a trilogy. It's Simon mm -hmm. Pegg, who I love. And I don't know if I brought it up last week, but he did a sitcom. It started in 99 called Spaced. That's really good. Mm -hmm. um, and he's popped up on other things. Uh, the, the trilogy goes Shaun of the Dead, which I remember thinking it's pretty good. It always seems to be the fan favorite. Pretty good. Hot Fuzz, which is by far the best of these movies. Really funny. Really great movie. And then this one, which watching it this time, I think was a little better, actually, than I remembered it. Mm -hmm. But I do have some questions. Can I ask okay. you a few questions? Sure. Michael? Okay. Uh, 12 beers. Mm -hmm. For the guys were, what, 18 when they mm -hmm. did this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, they only made it through like nine. Really? 12 beers? Is that yeah, too much? No. Well, it's 12 pints. Let's let's you know, it wasn't pints. it wasn't 12 12 ounce bottles. Okay, so it's 16 it's... ounce. Bottles. Okay. <laughs> I mean 12 12 pints for a bunch no, of yeah. dudes. No. Come on. We we yeah, it's minor leagues compared to what we we did in our heyday. I mean, come on. Yeah. That's that's pretty pitiful. I had a friend when I was younger, when we were that age, he would drink a 12 pack before we went out. Yeah. Pre-gaming. I mean, he, he, he was like the master of the pre-game. Yeah. Um, at that age, there's no way. Let's go do this monumental thing over the course of four hours or whatever. Mm -hmm. you, you couldn't have done 12. Like you're not yeah. known as a volume mm -hmm. drinker, mm -hmm. but you, Mike List, couldn't have done 12. Yeah, I, I you know, I it didn't really occur to me what, about the numbers, but yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, yeah. Am I right about this or the Tom Petty stuff? I'm, which one are we talking? About? <laughs> you're right. So, that they, they should have had a, a larger number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you mentioned the James Bond thing. Um, Pierce Brosnan, uh, Timothy Dalton is in Hot Fuzz. I don't know what the uh -huh. weird connection with James Bond. Tom and <laughs> well, is. British actors. I mean, there were familiar faces in this movie yeah. that I, I like seeing. Yeah, uh, I, I always forget their names. More, yeah. The guy from The Office, what's his name? Martin Freeman. Okay, he's in it. Nick Frost. Uh, what's that? Nick Frost, the big guy. He's his partner in a couple. Oh, okay. Of Who, who's the uh, guy who's in from Ray Donovan? He's in Mike Lee movies. Pete. He, he's Pete in this movie. Um, the guy oh, with the car, um, the, the car deal dealership. Yeah, I always forget his name. Um, I don't know, but I love him whenever whenever I see yeah. him. He, he's he's a good actor. Yeah, yeah, um, you're right. All these guys, good cast. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I I didn't like the there there was like four too many over the top fight scenes that went on yeah. and on. Oh yeah, it's it's like the my only beef with Ratatouille always was there's too many of these. He gets in traffic and dodges the cars, and it's. Like three minutes of screaming. And I'm like, do we need? Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. Once they start the fight, can we mm -hmm. just fast forward? Okay. They had a fight. Mm -hmm. There's too many of those. No. Well, yeah. Then then it became a, a fight in a bar to a fight against a town. Yeah. That's why I'm it, saying it, it turned into a zombie movie. It, and then know. all of a sudden, all these guys are like jujitsu experts. <laughs> Like if you yeah. walked in and saw uh -huh. them fighting mm -hmm. these supernatural beings, mm -hmm. wouldn't you think they're supernatural? Because they're doing fighting off like nine. Yeah. These are like 40 year old losers and they're uh -huh. like all of a sudden black belts. Uh, there was a wooden fence gag. Did you Do you remember that? <laughs> Where he jumps against a wooden fence and he just flops. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I wonder if that's an homage. There's a great one in... Uh, Hot fuzz where he jumps over a bunch of wooden fences. Oh, okay. That was a nice touch. I didn't pick up on that. Uh, once they realize what's happening, but then they have to be like, wait, are you good? Are right. I good? Mm -hmm. Are you good? Yeah. At that point, wouldn't you just say, okay, let's all split up. Right. Yeah. Race back to wherever <laughs> we're going. Because otherwise. Yeah. No, no. There's multiple times when they could have just left. Could have just left. Get out of town, jump in the yeah. car, get out of town. But like at some keep... point, you'd have to assume yeah. anyone, including your buddy, is one of the bad guys. Yeah. No. So 
the plot is running on fumes by the end. They, yeah. It's just being dragged out, and it's yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. So my next big point is, why did they just leave? Yeah. Uh, another thing about the main character, he keeps being accused of uh, never being wrong. Mm -hmm. Oh, Gary, always right. Gary King. I mean, how long can you keep accusing a guy of always being right if you you've learned that he's a total loser? Because mm -hmm. they never say you always think you're right. It's always no, you're always right, aren't you? Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, it's like, well, you know he's a loser. Mm -hmm. He's never wrong. Why are you even listening to any of his bullshit? Yeah. It's like you might as well say, why are you always dunking a basketball? It's yeah, like, they, they'll put up a, a sort of flimsy. They they try to give him a little bit of uh, pushback, but yeah, he 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 keeps winning them over and over. Yeah. over. I mean, this <laughs> is a guy you hate. <laughs> you begrudgingly, and now I uh -huh. can't remember how he got them back together. Anyway, yeah. Oh, always right, aren't you, Gary? Oh, I mm -hmm. guess we'll do whatever you just said. <laughs> Boom, heads chopped off. Yeah, no, the whole thing defies logic. I mean, uh, it's you know. Um. So am I hearing that you didn't, but you you said you, you thought it was better this time around than the first time. That's right. <laughs> so you're still standing that it's a good movie, even as you're picking it apart item by item here? I'm not saying it's a good movie. Okay. <laughs> but like, right. if these are supernatural beings, mm -hmm. but they can't outrun Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Some faulty uh, production of those robots. Um, my last question. I'm, I'm scratching one off. <laughs> if you're Gary, mm -hmm. you're a loser. You know you're a loser. Your life is absolute shit. Mm -hmm. If you're lucky, you'll go another three years without being found in the gutter, drowning in meth. Wouldn't you just accept this chance at immortality? To be one of these other things, yeah, mythical. Uh, what, what are you fighting for? A, a legend, yeah, yeah. What are you fighting for? Mm -hmm. You think you'd be like, oh, this is great. I can be this weird zombie for all eternity, just walk around and terrorize other people and mm -hmm. drink beer. Mm -hmm. What what life is he scrambling back to? Mm -hmm. What what life is he saving? Mm -hmm. So those are a few questions I had. <laughs> uh, Only a few. I mean, we yeah, yeah. we could keep going. I mean, well, this thing, I'm sorry, you this know. thing is just it was a nightmare. Uh, but it, it was it was better than I remember. But yeah, still a lot, lot, lot of eye rolling. That's all. <laughs> all right, hey, and then the, and then the alien comes out. It, it that that scene that was uh, mm -hmm. I, that was probably the worst scene in the movie. And then it turns out that was uh, Bill Nagy or Nagy his I, voice. Yeah. Bill Nye, yeah. Nye, is that how you pronounce it? I don't know how to pronounce it. I mean, I've loved him for 20 years and I've never heard. Yeah, and he... It's well, like it's, even it, when people it, ask Ray Davies how to say his name, after he answers, you still have kind of don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you seem to know how to pronounce uh -huh. Bill Nye's name. But it's like they even sort of wasted a good talent on on that horrible scene. But um, no, yeah, no, I, 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 I thought this was terrible. I, di I didn't like the first two mo movies that much. I, I saw them relatively close to when they came out. Uh, there was a lot of hype about them. I went in hoping to enjoy myself. Um, and this, even though there's jokey violence in, in this movie, I mean, it's it's hard to take serious because they're robots. So, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, he's like, a very... I, I can't knock it for, for, the, for the reasons I knocked those first two movies. Yeah, I mean, Hot Fuzz to me is head and shoulders above the other two. But Simon Pegg, like even his sitcom, Space, has surreal elements in it. So he really mm -hmm. likes that surreal stuff. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I'll always I'll always give him a chance. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's always in those stupid Mission Impossible movies, but, I mean, he does have to make money. <laughs> is Space on BBC? Yeah. Uh -huh. He wrote it with Jessica Hines. Uh, who uh, has been in a million great uh, uh, shows, uh, the Royal Family. Um, there she goes. She's uh, a WIA. Um, she's been in a gr million great um, sitcom. So, yeah, I'm. St I'm still. You know, I slowed down a little bit with uh, Cheers, and uh, I also have the first season of Faulty Towers. 
-hmm. lost my uh my cable uh went out in the last minute of the Knicks game. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? And it was out for it was out for about, I don't know, eight hours, out out for a while. So I'm like, oh, okay, I've I've got nothing to watch. I I'll watch these faulty towers uh DVDs I have. Um John Cleese and- will be thrilled. You, you watched a couple <laughs> episodes because the cable went out and you couldn't watch the New York Knicks. <laughs> but uh as I'm going along with faulty towers, I mean, it's just so slapsticky. I mean, there mm-hmm. it's, it's so, you know, I mean, Monty Python had some of that stuff, but it wasn't, there was more to it than that. Um, so this is just all like broad slapstick stuff. And I can only take it in small doses. Um, no good. You're saying no good to faulty tower. <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying uh, it's a bit of a letdown. <laughs> Faulty Towers, no good. Is this in your top 10? Um, I love Faulty Towers, but I don't know if it's in my top 10. No, okay. I, I don't love it as much as a lot of people put it. Most, most lists have, or a lot of lists have that in the office, either one, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. I love Faulty Towers. I like y'all. Uh, I don't know if I put it in my top 10. Mm-hmm. Um. I didn't casually watch it while waiting for the Knicks to come on and then to totally <laughs> dismiss it. Um, I could only watch two episodes. It was like it was two episodes was like kind of pushing it. Um, right. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's not my thing. They got that reboot coming that I think I've screened to you about. That I guess I'm, I'll be ready for that. But, well, if uh, he gets his shit together, it sounds like if, if he can learn how to write a sitcom, I guess uh, you'll have something to look forward to. <laughs> I'm sorry I mean, you didn't uh, you didn't like your faulty toss experience. <laughs> uh, I've slowed down on Cheers too. I'm still I still haven't made it through the second season. Uh, no, I'm I'm still yeah. I think I got a couple more episodes in the second season. I did notice another detail, a bar detail that I'm like, and it was also in World's End. Um, I saw it. I think it's it's just a visual cliche mm-hmm. that bartenders when they're they wipe down the bar or whatever. That they put the the wet rag on their shoulder. Ah, yes. Right. You you saw that in the world's end, and it, it's you know, coach is always putting that wet rag on his shoulder. Yeah, you're right. And it's like, why would you ever do that? I mean, a bar space isn't very big, right? Mm-hmm. You know. So if you got to walk five feet, six feet to get to your rag. That's like worth saving by putting a wet, dirty rag on your shoulder. Oh, I thought you were just going to say it's just gross. Well, it's gross. It is gross. Yeah. I'm saying, but I guess the 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 idea of the the wet rag on your shoulder is to like save you time. That the the rag is always within your mm. your grasp. Mm. But you want this gross thing on your on your shoulder. You wouldn't do a Gordon Ramsay and just like stick it down your belt or something. Like he always does this number. No. He stuck. He sticks rags down his belt. Uh, don't be gross, Mike. Please, don't be. <laughs> come on, this is a family. You're, you're bringing this up. No, no, like down his belt, like along his belt or whatever. Like, yeah. Now uh, you are. I will say, if I can make you sound after you're sounding so stupid about petty, you are <laughs> right about the towel thing. <laughs> in that, if you told me, okay, Greg, pretend to be a bartender, I think because. Anytime I've ever seen a bartender on TV, yeah, they do the slap it on their shoulders. Yeah. yeah. But you say that's no good. No, I, I never did that. I, I never thought to do it. I never saw anybody else do it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. All right. So. Hey, I'll uh, give you that one. Hey, you won that one, Mike. <laughs> uh, Can I tell you uh, what I'm liking? Uh, to those who have picked up on it, we're trying to do video. Uh-huh. From now on, uh, so I like doing the dramatic pen. <laughs> Mike Lisk is laying down something. You already have your signature uh, hand okay. motion. But, uh, oh, I, I wave my hand around a little bit, but yeah, I, I haven't done a whole lot. It's a two-parter. I'm not a, Mike Lisk is not a, I don't talk with my hands. I'm not one of those guys. Um, <laughs> it's a two-parter. When I get a Mike Lisk declaration coming, I do the snap. Uh-huh. And I do that. 
Yeah, I noticed. Yeah, okay. Duly noted. What's going on with your picture? You're getting like, you've got a grainy texture now. Yeah, the light's <laughs> gone. Hold on. Please, please dance and try to entertain the audience. For a I second. thought you were going for some gritty, uh, you know, street look. Oh, yeah, that's that's sharper. Ooh. Oh, there you are. Wow, now it's too bright. <laughs> Yeah. that's why i sit in half Whoa. semi that's why i sit Whoa. in semi darkness you know <laughs> but uh <laughs> i had one other item on on my docket here i wanted to discuss with you it is somewhat food related but also uh another artist I, i'll oh i'm i'm eager to hear what your take is on um i guess uh david letterman did an interview with somebody from vulture and he was talking about Warren Zevon. Uh, and I didn't realize, I mean, I mean, I knew he was young. How old do you think Warren Zevon, Warren Zevon was when he died? I'm guessing he's younger than I would think, which is always the case when, as you get older. Mm -hmm. uh, did, did he, did he hit 60? No. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 58? 56. 56. Wow. Yeah. It's like last night, uh, I was watching All in the Family. I've been watching All in the Family. I'm up to season seven. Mm -hmm. Edith just mentioned that she's acknowledged she's 48. <laughs> wow. I was like. <laughs> yeah, that's a mind blower. I was like. That's a hard 48. <laughs> yeah. And like uh -huh. when the show started, Dingbat was what, 39 or 40? <laughs> Wearing Whoa. those aprons, yeah, wow, um, yeah, I, I, wow, yeah. I, I knew he died young, but fifty six is. Woo. Mm -hmm. He did a lot of living in those years, from what I yeah. I'm, I've never been a. If you're asking me, uh, are you a big fan? I like some of his music. You know, uh, Excitable Boy was. I, I remember getting that record relatively close when it came out. Uh, I, I thought it was a great record, great songs on that album. Uh, yeah, I, I, I picked up a few of his records around that time. But then, yeah, he, he continued on. The Envoy, The Envoy, how do you say that? E-N-V-O-Y. The Envoy. Envoy? The Envoy. The okay. Envoy. Okay, yeah. And I, I, I got caught mispronouncing uh, <laughs> Sopracetto last week. I, I, I just want to try and, try and pronounce things correctly. But I remember when the Envoy came out, there's some great songs on that album. I think it's very underrated. Um, I saw him live. Uh, I saw him at uh, a friend of mine was at Glassboro State College in New Jersey, South Jersey. And uh, it was the, uh, the day uh, John Belushi died. Hmm. Um, I guess that's about 78. Was that 82. around 82, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was earlier than that. Anyway, yeah, I don't have the you exact. Want to test me, Mike? No, I don't know. <laughs> don't make me Wikipedia this shit in front of everybody. I don't know the exact year, but I'll I'll never forget that. Um, Sounds like you did. <laughs> he <laughs> he was doing a song from the Envoy, "Ain't That Pretty at All," which is really I really enjoy that song. Yeah. And uh, in the middle of it, he goes. He just goes, John Belushi. And then he falls on the stage. He just fell on the stage. I was like, wow. Not a lot of <laughs> not a lot of time uh to be doing little gags in the middle of your show, right? You know? And everybody scrambled to their iPhones to read the news. <laughs> well, this was this was before the iPhone when you could do stuff like that that wouldn't blow up, right? But uh yeah, maybe a little callous. I mean, I read that um biography about him it was an interesting book i'll sleep when i'm dead that's a, that's it's a good book it's you know if, even if you're not a fan it's 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 an interesting book uh he, he lit a, he led a very interesting life he was very particular about uh t-shirts <laughs> he actually had his assistant would have to buy a particular brand of t-shirt wherever they went <laughs> that's i don't know why i remember that weird detail i don't that's, know a lot about Warren that's, Zeebon, that's, that's, that's how my mind that works you know yeah. i remember details like that but uh so anyway thing. in this interview letterman is is just you know he's still uh singing the praises of warren zevon and so on and 
And he, he did that, uh, I guess that was the last television uh, interview appearance he did before he died. So they're talking about that. And, uh, you know, he's famous for that comment he, met, he, he made uh, about enjoy every sandwich. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um, he's right. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's a, you know, off the cuff kind of remark. But, you know, yeah, it's it's enjoy every moment. Yeah. You, you know, everything, you know, because you don't know when you're going to check out. So, you know, good, good little uh, thing there. And but uh, Letterman. Letterman is sort of beating himself up about it. The, uh, the, the last show, he, he can't watch it anymore. Uh, but he, he sort of his regret is that he he wanted to ask him what his, his response should have been. How about raps? What do you think of raps? And raps. raps, you know, like a wrap in lieu of a sandwich. Oh, right, right. Wrap, right. W-R-A-P-S. Invented by Bobby Valentine. <laughs> uh, but um, because, yeah, Letterman wanted to make the argument that uh, raps are bullshit. Uh, do you agree? Where do you, where do you stand on raps? Uh I'm fine with it. To be honest, I wish I thought of them more. I wish I got them more. Like, I just never mm -hmm. think of them. I assume they probably are healthier. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, I just never remember They them. can be a mess, though. I mean, you know, I've had decent wraps, you know. They're basically burrito. Yeah, it, it, they're, they're less filling than a sandwich if you don't want to load up on bread. I get it, you know. Yeah. But uh, just, just eat half a sandwich then, you know, if you want to cut back. Oh, but uh, <laughs> just eat half. So enjoy. That would be that would be my uh, parting uh, advice to people. Enjoy half a sandwich. Half a sandwich. <laughs> take a bite well, out of bite, but not a big bite. So did we get your take on Warren Zevon? Positive, negative, uh, indifferent. He, he's in one of these guys. I don't have a bad thing to say about him. Uh huh. He seems number one. He's super interesting. Mm -hmm. He's funny. Mm -hmm. uh, I like Werewolves of London. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but every, every he's one of these guys that into me, and I've been listening to all this stuff. Mm -hmm. He always seems to be one of these guys that is so obsessed. I'm not gonna. How do I put this? He, he wants to be a writer, like a literary writer. Yeah, and that so he shoehorns. Word that I've accused the drive by truckers of this, uh, much to their chagrin, if they knew I existed. Um, they sh you know, shoehorning words and stuff that ruins a melody or music. It's, it's such a I mean, so you, just write poems. Uh, you, you, you're not a fan of him, him using the word bursalosis in his, in his song, sure. <laughs> Uh, it's just every uh -huh. most stuff of him I've tried to listen to is just very wordy, and I I, I have to be hooked by the music first. Mm -hmm. That's why I can only like Dylan so much. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I probably love Paul McCartney more than you know, probably more T. McCartney than Lennon. Although I love Lennon, uh, he just always seemed to be that where I'm never going to be hooked by the music, mm -hmm. even though he's everybody says, oh, his lyrics are amazing, great. I can read them. No, uh, the the no, the first two records. Actually, I'll say like the let me let me let me look at this mm -hmm. because I, I I'll I'll give credit for his early records. Um, are pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. Um, like I like like I I think I love Pitiful Me, and then but once I and I'm like all right this is great but then after like a minute in I'm like all right it's not as rocking. Are not as great musically as I thought it was or was hoping, and I just kind of peter out halfway through. Well, the, the Excitable Boy has his biggest songs, you know, Werewolves of London, Lawyers, Guns, and Money, mm -hmm. Excitable Boy, Roland, the Headless Gun Thompson Gunner. Um, poor, Poor Pitiful Me is on his first album. I think that's a, a really good album. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, yeah. Like I said, I I, I liked uh, the Envoy. Um, the the live album is very good. Uh, Stand in the fire, 
He seems like he would be fun to go see, right? Yeah, he was fun. You know, yeah. he, he's a he's he was a good good showman. Mm -hmm. uh, even if he, you know, despite that John Belushi uh, gag, let go, Mike. Let go. You can't bring him back. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, he, yeah, I, I should give him some of his later records more. I should listen to them more because I, 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 yeah, I, I was with him pretty much up until like '87. Uh, Sentimental Hygiene, I think, was the last record I really... That's got that song about Boom Boom Mancini on it. Uh, there's some good stuff on there. Um, the Envoy came out in 82. Yeah, that's when I saw him. Wow, you're you're good with the memory. I'll give you that. Um, that's got a song, The Hula Hula Boys, I enjoyed. Uh, Ain't That Pretty at All. Jesus Mentioned. There's some really good stuff on there. And, and it's, I'm not just talking about the lyrics. I, th I think the music is is good too you know um he had a good guitarist uh, i can't think of his name now of course but he played with uh jackson brown i believe he, he used a lot of those same uh la musicians bad luck streak and dancing school has the uh famous uh bruce springsteen cover genie needs a shooter which uh i don't think it's a good springsteen song <laughs> I don't think it's a good Warren Zevon song, but there's a song on uh, there called Play It All Night Long, which is like sort of the best dig I think I've ever heard against Leonard Skinner, who I like Leonard Skinner, but, you know, I, I get it. You know, they they were kind of pervasive and they, they could use a knock. So like whenever somebody plays like a Leonard Skinner song in a uh, bar, I'll, I like to follow with Play It All Night Long by Warren Zevon because there's, just check it out. It's got some funny lyrics in there, but uh, I think he's an artist worth checking out more. I, I'm I'm going to try and listen to some of his later stuff. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I don't I don't have any thing bad to say about him. Just never appealed to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I, if I was to shit on him, I would suggest that one thing we have learned about David Letterman is his favorite band of all time uh, appears to be the Foo Fighters. <laughs> So, so yeah, his musical in, taste is so it's like if all sketchy. of a sudden David Letterman says, I love your band, <laughs> sketchy, be like, mm. yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I just don't like I've never loved music where they start with the words and then shoehorn it in. And mm -hmm. the, the the truckers have a handful of songs where it'd be a great song if they just didn't destroy mm -hmm. the melody or whatever or the rhythm. By oh we're a literary band we have to have these words. It's like, oh, come well, on. no, I, I I think Patterson Hood is I I, he, I can he he's the one who I think is guilty of doing that. He's um, the worst, but but uh, Cooley does it too. One of my yeah, favorite yeah, songs, mm -hmm. Raymond Cassiano. I didn't know where I said it right, and mm -hmm. that would be even more perfect if sometimes he didn't feel the need to like. Uh huh. So. Well. Give Warren, I think, you know, listen to those early records and uh, maybe, you know, I think you might enjoy the music <laughs> uh, a little more than uh, you're writing him off as just being a lyrics guy. Yeah, I mean, so, I don't, again, I don't want to, no disrespect to Warren. Uh -huh. Yeah. Unless you see a bad documentary about him where somebody says one bad thing and then you throw it right. all out. Yeah. Is that what it was? Was one yeah, bad thing? It, it, yeah, it was a documentary. Somebody said bad thing. I guess you never read that 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 story about Bruce and the canoe uh, when the guys borrowed the canoe and uh, Bruce Bruce find so them for it. on Bruce makes you feel better. About this? <laughs> okay, I'm just saying. I don't. So I don't think you're with with the Tom Petty love. You think making Bruce look bad is uh, good? <laughs> All right. I'm just saying. There's 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 knocks against Bruce too. Hasn't uh, changed your worldview. Hey, his uh, all those documentaries he puts out just are just snooze fest. I couldn't make it through his thing <laughs> podcast with Obama. <laughs> and who do I love more than those two guys? Oh boy, I couldn't make it through. And then they were like, "Hey, did you like that? Thank you, Obama." I couldn't sit through the podcast. Yeah, two rich guys backslapping each other for an hour. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, hey. no, I. I made it to the end of one episode, but that was it. I'm like, yeah, I, I get it. You, you guys are great. You're both great. Yeah. I'm happy That's to what we do, Bruce. right? Isn't that sort of what we do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A couple of rich guys. <laughs> a couple rich guys. to hear about us bitching and moaning. <laughs> Arguing over 
Oh, I got petty. no problem, Bruce. <laughs> this album sucks. That album sucks. Uh-huh. The documentaries are the same thing. Bruce is going for a sound uh, over and over. <laughs> I got no beef with that. But uh-huh. I've never seen anybody imply in any way that he was an asshole. Uh-huh. Uh, apparently, you had a canoe story. Yeah, there's a canoe story. Up, look, look, up, look up the canoe story. <laughs> he would he would find his own band members when they uh, borrowed his canoe without his knowledge. <laughs> Not okay with people stealing his shit. <laughs> that is bad, Mike. <laughs> Got it. Huh. All right. They didn't, I bet they don't mind it every two weeks when that paycheck hits. <laughs> Thank or you when they the get money, but here's my canoe boss. Or when they get dismissed for uh, an experiment that flops entirely for two records of talk about uh, snoozers. Uh, local, records. local, local hero. And, oh, dismissed uh, and then those two records. Well, yeah. <laughs> could have been one record. Could have been saved because one out. Uh huh. I don't think I'm wrong. I'd say the uh-huh. same thing about Westerberg stereo model. Should have been a should have been one out. Uh, tighten it up. Nobody, nobody's defending those two albums. <laughs> well, I just wanted to check. Just wanted to check. But better days. A sanity check. That was a, that days. was a sanity check. Better days is in my top ten. Human Touch is a great song. And uh, Living Proof. Yeah, there's there's some good songs on. There's there. a couple. Yeah, it could if if it was one ten song album could have been great. Is that an assignment for you? Stay Bruce's double album bullshit. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's an easy one, Mike. <laughs> I think it is. Start Can, with that. Last week's week. projects, which I instantly forgot. <laughs> Human Touch, Lucky Town. Uh-huh. I like Lucky Town. See, boom, mm-hmm. I'm at four songs already. Mm-hmm. Oh, I called it Local Hero. I got I even got the name, the title wrong. That's a Peter, what's his name <laughs> movie? Uh, uh what's his name? Animal House. You talking about that movie? Well, that is a great movie. Yeah. Local Hero. Yeah. Bill Forsyth is the director. He was on a run. You know, he, he, he Gregory's Girl is a great movie. Mm-hmm. I think that guy just stopped. He, 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 he you know, I don't know what his, what his personal life was, but uh, Local mm-hmm. Hero was like one of my favorite movies. And then he kind of fell off the planet. Mm-hmm. You know, like, what happened to that guy? And I think I read up on it. You know, he just, yeah, he, he kind of went in a different direction. He kind of just. Um, Peter Rieger. That's the guy's name. Yeah, that's the actor. Yeah. What other movies did Forsyth do? Well, Gregory's Girl is the other big one that comes to mind. I didn't see that. Is that Richard the, Rackets? No, it was, I think it was all like uh, Scottish, you know, unknowns. Hmm. Uh, young people. You'd love it. Try and try and track that movie down. You 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 check one of Mike's recommendations out. <laughs> and come back. Woo. Yeah, Mike's pick. Mike's right, pick. Gregory's girl. Is that Gregory's his best? Gregory's girl. Yeah, you'll love it. I mean, he's even got your name uh, in the title. Right. What? Is that your favorite of his? No, I, I think Local Hero is the best. But Gregory's girl is just very entertaining too. I, I think you'll love it. You know, I think it's right in your sort of young people. You know, trying to figure themselves out. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> young. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. All right. You might have to put the the captions on for the thick uh, Scottish accents. Well, now you're being insulting. Okay. No, it's not insulting. You know, accents are, can trip people up. Anyway, right. so this has been fun. Uh, I guess we'll be seeing more of each other. <laughs> you see? Yeah. Oh, oh, good, yeah. Good point. Fortune cookies. Right. Okay. Yeah. I have Unless one. we forget. Okay. Someone I forget, what, has been I, on quite I forget a run. where the camera is. <laughs> Someone so, has been on a quite a run with his fortunes. So. Oh yeah, you, you, I mean that that big fortune come through. I mean, you still got a couple more weeks. Well, wait a minute. May nineteenth. Two great right? fortunes in a row. It was the one That's about. It, it was very specific about it. Something's going to happen within the yeah. month. But now I switched to this place that apparently sucks. Oops. Oh, this is stupid. This is like a. You want to hear this one? No. <laughs> it's like a paragraph too. In order to discover who you are, first learn who everybody else is. You're what's left. Oh, 
I was going to say that's as boring as a Tom Petty song, but I don't want to get you upset. So. Uh -huh. I'm what's left. I'm the leftovers. All right. That's, that was worthless. <laughs> Almost as worthless as mine. This, this could apply to somebody else, but in the middle of a busy life, take some time to be a kid again. Okay. Uh, I don't think I can be accused of not trying to be a kid enough. <laughs> right? I don't think anybody's accusing me of, you know, Greg needs to lighten up. Mm -hmm. Stop being so such an adult all uh -huh. the time. He's wearing us out with his maturity and responsibility. You literally wrote a book about being with a kid all the time. <laughs> Thank you. For a couple of years of your life. Uh, That's the one still... you finally got right. What's that? <laughs> uh huh. And uh, yeah, this is coming full circle. Another plug yeah. for your book. <laughs> yeah, who's an asshole now? <laughs> and um, <laughs> I always get a kick out of you with your uh, the young folks you're with. I see in photos and little videos on Instagram. Uh, so yeah, no, yeah, nobody could accuse you accuse you of not. Uh, Staying young, young at heart. Let's put it that way. Thanks, buddy. Okay. Well, except physically, young at heart. <laughs> okay. Except for my actual heart. <laughs> but yeah, that that's I don't feel like this applies to me. So mm -hmm. okay. Well, it's been fun. Hit that subscribe button. And uh we'll pick it up next week. Do whatever Mike just said. Young Michael, at this time next week, I will have watched Gregory's girl. Let's let's also let's Let's both agree to finish out the season of Cheers. I okay, don't I'll, yeah, that'll be easy. I think I, I think I got like two episodes left. Yeah, I got a couple more, but let let's finish out season two. Okay, because there's no reason. It's not like I don't love it. I'm just uh -huh. <laughs> Mike okay. enjoyed it, and we'll see everybody next week. Bye bye.